Uh, verses 14 to 29. 14 to 29. Yes, please. Thank you, Margaret. And when Jesus came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he's thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting passage, and I, um, yeah. my my initial thought was put yourself in the disciples' shoes, and uh, mm. you've been commissioned to go out and heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and uh, you've been doing it for a while, and then you come across one that will not move. <laughs> Uh, does, doesn't respond to uh, the power that you've been given and uh, you know I think probably many of us will have experienced times when you think well I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and nothing's happening what, what is wrong um, and many 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 times and uh, the, uh, a number of things brought me to, to think about uh, whether the church is uh, theology has been shaped by experience or shaped by the word of God um, Dad shared a, a prophecy uh, I don't know whether it was a prophecy or an encouragement by Lance Warner to the Americans to get involved in the election uh, because we, as Christians sometimes we can um, just think oh God is in control so I don't need to get involved because it will turn out however God wants it to, to turn out um, and uh, you know we, we we so often say well yeah it's okay but God's in control almost as dismissive I don't have to do anything about it whereas we are commissioned by God to take care of this planet and to pray and to to seek for his will to be done so you know the, the pandemic is not God's will uh, yes he is in supreme control but uh, you know his will is not in what what's going on and uh, we have a role to play in just seeking God's will to be done and to pray and to be like many of those revivalists we've seen in the past who have ignored uh, the plague and gone in and healed and uh, there's such a big difference uh, in, in where we're at and perhaps what we should be doing so I, I'm still struggling with this uh, uh, idea has my theology been changed by my experience 
or is it based completely on the word of God and on the very nature of God? And it wasn't just Lance Warno. Um, I think uh, I'd heard something by Bill Johnson on, on, along a similar line. Um, uh, Margaret's favourite people, um, is it Robbie Dawkins and Mario Murillo? I, yeah. I never get the names right. Um, uh -huh. But th there's a lot of people challenging the church. You know, is your theology actually based on your experience and have you diluted what God wants you to do and what God wants you to expect? Because the Bible clearly tells us, doesn't it, with God all things are possible. Yeah. And uh, the Bible tells us that we were commissioned, just like the disciples, to go out and do the same things as Jesus did. And... Uh, we, we think, well, I'm, I'm so far off from that, uh, and I expect we all feel quite a distance off from uh, that. And a, a, a lovely quote from Bill Johnson uh, is, I just want to read it because I'll, I'll say it wrong. The safest hiding place for unbelief is misapplied theology, um, and the most common place for unbelief is our misunderstanding of God's sovereignty. And uh, that's very true. I, I've, I've heard it before, and and yet we still hear things. Whatever happens is the will of God. Uh, my prayer for healing was not answered because it wasn't the will of God, and that sort of puts to question. Well, surely God's will is all that should be healed. Surely, uh, in heaven, there is no more tears. And if if we're calling down what's in heaven to earth, then there should be no pain, no suffering. Um, so it, it's, it's too quick for us to just uh, say those things in response to, to our prayers not being answered and we're not seeing what, what uh, heaven on earth and sometimes we don't even step out to pray for healing because we, we think well it, it's not going to work in this situation I was um, one of my uh, close friends uh, who I was on Healing Prayer Network with, uh, Alistair Cole. You'll, you'll know his brother, perhaps by reputation, Ian Cole runs the World Prayer Centre in Birmingham. And he's got tumours on his brain at the moment. And there's been a prayer request gone out and everybody's responding, uh, quite good. But it, it's, it's interesting how, how, how many people are being so guarded about what they pray uh, and saying, if it's God's will. Well, I can understand that in one sense, but surely it is God's will that Ian shouldn't be, shouldn't be suffering. Um, and there is a mystery. If God takes Ian, uh, then that must have been part of God's plan, but it's also the enemy is trying to take out God's people at this moment in time. We see it over and over again. So God is sovereign, and the things that he's laid out to happen in the end times, Jesus' return, uh, the great tribulation, all of those things will happen because God has determined those will happen. But as Lance Warner said, God doesn't always get his way on this planet, mainly because the believers in Jesus don't agree that God can change things and don't, not, not don't pray because a lot of believers do pray for his kingdom to come, but it's actually engaging in the situation and being, being uh, like going to the polls and voting. I, I know a, a lot of believers will not vote because they don't believe God's involved in politics. Well, um, you know, we, we do have a responsibility uh, to be involved. We, I mean, I, I've been a poll counter in the past and, you know, things do go wrong in polling stations. So we... We should be involved in those sort of things. Christians are, are placed in this earth to be involved in everything and to, to see God's plans and purposes fulfilled in everything. So um, the challenge for me has been, in, in this last week particularly, is to look at my, my own theology and my own reticence in doing things to say, am, am I actually doing or not doing things because... Uh, I've lost my faith in, in what God's word says I can do or is it um, because of experience and you know it's a challenge for all of us to actually examine I think quite frequently uh, what do we believe God wants us to do and uh, you know scripture tells us what he wants us to do 
but whether we're doing it, it is that because uh, we're not whether we're not doing it is it because uh, our faith has been um, squashed by our own experience and our own thinking about what what has happened in the past. So Lance and uh, Bill Johnson and uh, Mario have, have all challenged me in this area, and I think God has has used that. Um, we we all know that it's God's will, according to two Peter uh, three nine, I think it is. It's God's will that none should perish, but we know that people do perish. Uh, so, and, and why do they perish? Well, some of it is possibly because believers haven't done their part in sharing the gospel others will be because they've never had the opportunity uh, and obviously Jesus has said not everybody will believe but at least they've had the opportunity to make that decision God doesn't want anybody to perish but it's uh, our responsibility to share the gospel with everybody so that they have the opportunity to reject or accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour and the same, same is true about healing as well. Uh, peop, some people are not healed because a Christian hasn't come alongside and prayed and believed that God doesn't want them to be sick. And uh, that, that's a real challenge for me. I, I don't know whether you saw on Facebook, I'm actually looking at becoming a hospital chaplain. And uh, I, went, I was online with uh, Elin's uh, chaplaincy conference yesterday. It's, a, it's, a, it's probably a couple of years away at, at this moment in time, but I've been thinking about that. Uh, Ray and Becky said, I'll make a great chaplain. Daniel said, yeah, Charlie Chaplin. But, <laughs> but, you know, there are some great, great believers involved in chaplaincy and praying for people when, when, when they've been asked to. And I, I just feel it's a golden opportunity to get involved uh, alongside people who are suffering to actually bring some hope uh, to them uh, in Jesus Christ so I, I'm looking at that but uh, I can remember Lou Engel I think it was about 10 years ago made a prophecy in Washington that stadiums would be full with people bringing their, uh, on their crutches and their wheelchairs and leaving them all behind and uh, you know that is possible that is possible with God and uh, I, I look forward to those days when the church gets back to being so uh, powerful and dynamic. We have the power, but we're not using it, I believe, uh, to the point where the world will stand up and see that God's church has the answer to so many situations. I, I love Revelation 21, verse 4. Uh, God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And uh, that is God's very nature. And Jesus was the perfect model of God's heart, God's nature, God's character, uh, and God's power. Uh, and he told his disciples to reflect that. And he tells us to reflect the very nature of God. So perfect theology in Jesus is that we go out and heal the sick and raise the dead and cleanse the lepers and do all the things that Jesus did and, and that's what he told his disciples to go and do um, so what am I doing I'm not I'm, I'm not there yet and uh, God's still working on me um, but Jesus lived to demonstrate the nature and the will of God and so so should we so it, it's, it's a big challenge for, for me, uh, always has been a big challenge for me to, to continue to believe that God wants even more than uh, I've currently experienced. I, as I read that passage, I thought, yeah, Jesus had sent the, the 12 apostles out with that commission in uh, Matthew 10, verses 7 to 8. It says to go out to cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead, preach the gospel and yet they'd come up against this uh, possessed boy who had a mute spirit and uh, you know those disciples were no different from you and I they were people, yes they had the, the wonderful privilege of walking with Jesus but they were as I've often said a very dysfunctional bunch of people, you know, come from all sorts of backgrounds 
some of them were educated, some of them not educated, some of them were the brash and harsh and the Peters of this world. Uh, Simon the Zealot would have beheaded a Roman soldier if he had half the chance. But Jesus had worked on their lives. And they'd gone out and they'd seen all these miracles taking place because Jesus had commissioned them and empowered them by the Spirit to do that. And then they meet this uh, challenge where a boy is not delivered. And if the story had ended there and Jesus didn't heal them, we could develop a theology, couldn't we? It's not God's will to heal in every case. We could have just left it there. And uh, we, we, we haven't because Jesus goes on and brings the healing. And I, I love the disciples' response. They, they, they weren't dismayed uh, to the point of giving up. They wanted to know and they pulled Jesus aside and said, why didn't it happen when we prayed? And Jesus gives this uh, really incredible answer. This type only comes out by prayer and fasting. Well, where did Jesus pray and fast before he cast them out? <laughs> it was part of his lifestyle, admittedly, yeah. but he, 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 did, he didn't meet this person with this, and then go away and pray and fast before he actually delivered uh, brought the deliverance and uh, uh, to, to me it just speaks of having a, a lifestyle and a hunger for seeing the miraculous of God you know I, I'm, I'm on a, a spiritual hunger fast for seeing God do greater things uh, that's my fast at this moment in time and perhaps Jesus was challenging their their expectations their, their faith levels um, and their, their determination to see what God would want them to do. He didn't want them guilty for, for not fasting or praying. He, he was just saying, come on guys, um, everything is possible. And uh, you just need to, to, to really hunger to see the works of God. And perhaps their, their hunger for seeing the works of God in this particular case, they'd met a, a really difficult case. They'd met a, a boy that was being thrown in the fire and in the water. And perhaps that just daunted them a little bit. And Jesus, uh, I don't think he was saying through that particular passage that we all need to pray and fast before we go and do every deliverance. We, we just need a, a hunger and a lifestyle that is determined to see God do uh, what God wants to do. And that's to bring healing and relief and deliverance. Um, yeah, because... Some of the Bible stories we, we, we can take and we can develop a theology or misapply a theology that God doesn't work in every situation. Well, God wants to work in every situation. The fact that he doesn't get to work in every situation is very often uh, down to mankind's um, and believers' lack of faith or, or lack of determination to push in for the things of God. Um, Lance used a, a, I think it was, was it Lance? No, it was probably Bill Johnson, used an, in, posed an, uh, an interesting question from the story of Jesus calming the winds and the storms in Matthew chapter 8. Jesus rebuked the winds and the storms. Well, was it God's will that the winds and the storms were there? Was God in control? Because if it was, then surely... Jesus can't rebuke what God has sent along. Because that would be a divided house, wouldn't it? So the enemy is in the background there trying to stop Jesus fulfilling his ministry and to disturb the storms and to put fear into the disciples. Yet we can take things that come along in nature, in pandemics or whatever, and say, well, God's in control and I can't rebuke it because God sent it. Well, no. <laughs> God is not in everything because we live in a fallen world and the enemy is using so many things to create fear and distress and death and stealing our hope. So, you know, we, we, we have, through the Holy Spirit, the same responsibility as Jesus had to command and rebuke those things that are not in God's plan and that seek to kill and destroy. So... Even the pandemic, we can rebuke. And it, 
I, I, I trust this uh, day of prayer and fasting that the government's being called to comes to pass uh, because I, I trust that it's a day when we will corporately uh, rebuke the things that the enemy is trying to do in, in this world and see God work an incredible miracle. So, um, it just changed my, my thinking about things that we, act, we, we tend to accept in life. When I, I thought about that uh, rebuking of the, the winds and the storms, um, how often have I said, oh well, uh, that, that was all in God's plan. Well, yeah, God can use everything for good. We know that. God can work everything together for good. But it doesn't necessarily mean that all the things that come against us are actually uh, the will of God, uh, but he, he can use them. So that, that, that was a challenge for me. He said, Jesus said to the disciples, these sort of things only come out by prayer and fasting. And it, it was a challenge for them to be, I believe, hungry enough to see God work in power and to do what God wants to do. And the big question that came to me out of that was, do I live a lifestyle of hunger for the will of God to be manifest in every area of our lives? Do I hunger to see the healing power of God at work and in, in my own life enough and in other people's lives that, that I will do anything in terms of prayer and getting out and getting involved in people's lives and, and talking to people to see the will of God, to see the will of God that they be saved, to see the will of God that they be healed, to see the will of God that they, they be delivered. And uh, that's a question I leave with all of us, uh, particularly myself, and it's a, it's a question I think uh, periodically we need to ask ourselves, has something stopped me doing what I, be, I know God has told us to do because I have not experienced the result that God wanted to come about and am I accepting things in life that are not the will of God uh, that is a clear plan of the enemy to seek, kill and destroy and uh, just accepting that, that, that that's all in God's plan it, God can use it God can bring good out of it but it's not necessarily what God would want because he, he wants the best for us. He, he has a future and a hope. And the enemy is out there right at this moment in trying, trying to steal uh, hope from everybody uh, on this planet. And regrettably, politicians, I believe, uh, are using the fear of the pandemic to increase their control over the lives of mankind. Uh, and it, it's an evil force that is going on in this world. Uh, some people are calling it leftist and Marxist uh, and that is probably true. Um, so many socialist Christians are not going to agree with that uh, uh, that belief. But uh, I don't know whether you saw the post I put on that Goebbels once said it's easy to control mankind as a politician once you can instill fear into them and that's what brought about the Nazi. Uh, and we can see that with the, the rise of um, rebellion amongst young people at this moment in time they're responding to the fear and creating fear fear just seems to be uh, gripping the world at this time and it's an evil force which must be rebuked in the name of Jesus uh, and whenever we uh, meet with that uh, people that are in, in that place we, we need to be giving them hope in Jesus Christ and rebuking the fear that it has over all those that we come across. Jesus uh, responded to the, the father of this child in an incredible way. Um, the, the father said, but if you can uh, do anything for my son, that's a very low level of faith, isn't it? There's not, there's not much sort of belief in Jesus but if you can uh, um, it's a, a very low level of faith it's not uh, if it's your will or anything like that so we can have 
the, the lowest level of faith in expectation and Jesus still responded to it uh, and that's the beauty of, of this story Jesus said if you believe then anything is possible what a, what a wonderful say if you believe and the, the, the boy's father just said I believe help my unbelief and uh, that's, that's we can be at the lowest level of faith and expectation and Jesus gives us that invitation that if we believe then anything is possible and uh, I look forward to what Jesus is going to do in in this world in in this time through his church through the likes of you and me as our faith levels rise to the point where we rebuke and see uh, Jesus have victory in this situation because it's not God's will that so many people should be dying it's definitely not God's will that so many people should be in a grip of fear Fear comes from the enemy. And, uh, you know, politicians or the evil spirit behind politics and governments uh, will make the biggest opportunity of this to take control over human life. And we have to stand against that and meet the challenge. And it it, it can be costly. You know, it can be costly. So, um, I, I also came across a, a, another thought you know very often if if I pray for somebody I know, I know I've done it myself and I kick myself when I when I think about this is you prayed for somebody to be healed and they've not been healed and you say well perhaps their faith wasn't strong enough and it's not their faith because <laughs> James 5 says it's the, the prayer of faith that heals a person so it's my fault <laughs> it's, it's my level of faith uh, that, that that's in question so we have to take responsibility for what we have or have not done and uh, I, I'm just really encouraged to, by Jesus' response to that father if you believe then anything is possible if we believe absolutely anything is possible and that's uh, where we stand as we move forward through this pandemic uh, at the moment the world is looking at it and everything is going downhill again but if we believe as believers we can see a turn of this great tide uh, of the enemy that's trying to seek uh, kill and destroy so